you need to do a gap analysis to kind of see where you are, benchmarks and baselines. So a gap analysis is the difference between control objectives and your existing controls. The existing controls are based on your risk treatment or your risk appetite. Are you avoiding it? Are you accepting it? Are you mitigating it? Are you getting a cyber insurance endorsement on your corporate liability policy? Gap analysis is the result of corporate security governance and strategy, so it comes from the top. Gap analysis is the basis for the Original Information Security Program Action Plan. It will be conducted in an iterative manner to review and report on effectiveness of your implemented controls. The focus should be on established key goal indicators and key performance indicators. Now we just discovered recently that Yahoo admitted to having 3 billion accounts hacked in a 2013 data breach. Equifax also recently admitted that over half of the U.S. was affected by their data breach in the summer of 2017. And companies like Deloitte, J.P. Morgan, as well as the New York Fed were also hacked and robbed. So we here at Brio, we want to avoid that similar fate. So we're going to measure the effectiveness of our controls and countermeasures to secure the Brio Security Operations Center, first of all, the SOC. That's where you, the CISO, has your main responsibility. So we want to evaluate the maturity of our security controls. Then we'll compare that to our desired state the state of security that represents the marriage between our risk treatment and risk handling and our acceptable residual risk. And this is difficult to do just purely quantitatively. We want to combine some qualitative and quantitative measurements. Now, what we see here is the Capability Maturity Model Integration, CMMI. And this is a commonly used benchmark to look at capabilities and to build mature operations by doing solid comparisons of your existing controls along with best practices. We use this to identify performance gaps and security gaps and each level, as you can see here from level one to level two and so on, builds on the next level or the previous level for continual improvement. Our goals here are better security, but also enhanced quality of service and products the efficient and secure delivery of our value proposition, including improved customer satisfaction, which means internal and external customers, and if you're a for-profit organization, increased profitability. So this model from the CMMI Institute, and there's different models you can use, okay? Uh, the ISACA has COBIT-5, they have their models. Open Fair has a model I'm gonna show you here in a second. But this model, if we start at level one, that's the initial level. So here, we would consider our processes, our security controls unpredictable, poorly implemented, and basically reactive. Okay, there's no proactive, there's very little inline capability to stop an attack. We would call this the initial poor level of integration. Then we go to the next level, the manage level. Here, our processes and controls are being projectized, okay? We realize the gaps. We realize the flawed nature of our initial implementation. So we're now going to introduce management, risk management, security management, to generate programs and projects. And again, this is still going to be reactive. Level three is called the defined level. Here, our processes and controls are proactive. Typically, we're working off of standards like Sarbanes-Oxley or HIPAA, ITIL, COBIT. We've got a framework in place, infrastructure, okay? Level four, the next level, is what we call quantitatively managed. Now we're using measurable metrics. We have enhanced visibility. The reporting tools that we're using is delivering valuable data, which becomes information, which is becoming wisdom. So our processes are measured and controlled and to a certain degree automated. And then of course, level five, the highest level is optimizing where everything is in place. You have a comprehensive implementation of your security controls, administrative, technical, physical, and you're just focusing now on continual improvement. Let's go up to the CMMI Institute real quick. 
This is a good source of information for implementing a process assessment model or characterizing the maturity level of your security controls. You can come up here and just click on get started. And if you move down here, you can see, you know, we're building organizational capability. And this is where as a CISO, you can help your organization reduce cost, increase the rapid deployment of controls, improve the quality of your controls. So this would be an organization that would, you can be a member of the Institute and get a, a wealth of information. So that's a resource I want you to be aware of. Okay, what I wanna do here is show you a more practical example of analyzing maturity levels. Here, this is a COBIT-5 based evaluation. And what we're doing is we've collected our data and we know our business goals and our IT goals. So we wanna determine the effectiveness of the security of our security operations center here at Brio Insurance Group. And again, as the CISO, this type of documentation will fall under your responsibility. So this is an example of evaluating the security IT process, in this example, for the operations center. Now, this is obviously a little qualitative because it's going to be based on the auditor's expert judgment and subject matter expertise. But again, we often combine qualitative and quantitative. Let me just break this down for you. We have six statements, okay, that we're really going to use to evaluate the effectiveness and the maturity of this program. And we're all going to, we're going to weight all of these the same, even though often in a real world environment, you know, these statements wouldn't be weighted the same. I might weight internal expertise over external judgment, and I might weight monitoring and reviewing and updating over, let's say, an AUP and user awareness. But for the sake of this and the math involved, we'll just go ahead and keep the weight at one. And then uh, we're asking the question, and this could be you know, filled out by a wide variety of individuals and stakeholders in like a Delphi method where it's anonymous and then we can you know, build a consensus. But let's say as a CISO, you're gonna fill this out. And so you're gonna ask yourself with these six statements, do you concur not at all? Do you concur a little? Do you concur to a good degree or do you concur completely? So you can see we have attached quantitative numbers to this. Not at all is zero, completely is one, a little bit or some would be 0.33 and to a good degree 0.66, okay? So then we go through and we say, you know, we can use a check mark or we can use the X. I used a, you know, thumbs up symbol. So for the first statement, the security controls are tightly coupled with the strategic vision and accepted framework. You know what? I concur completely as a CISO. The security control environment is frequently monitored, reviewed, and updated for continual improvement. Okay, I completely concur with that. Then internal experts are in place and properly documented and communicated to assure that industry best practices and compliance, and pardon the spelling errors there, you fix that because it bugs me, and compliance are being implemented with respect to administrative, technical, and physical controls. Okay, I completely concur. Next, we same question, but about external, external expert judgment and SME expertise, okay? Not at all. Maybe we're not using any external inputs whatsoever. So we're gonna say not at all on that. Next, automated monitoring, self-assessment and compliance checking are extensively deployed throughout the enterprise. You know, as a CISO, we'll say to a good degree, okay? So we could say a little, 0.33, to a good degree, 0.66. Next, the technology is in place to maintain acceptable use policy and user awareness in order to reduce data leakage or data loss and optimize security knowledge by utilizing various effective training and awareness tools. We're going to say we do that to a good degree. So now we assign values. We assigned, you know, completely to these, so the values 1, 1, and 1. Here, not at all, was a value of 0. 5 and 6 were to a good degree, so 0.66 on these. And when you get the average of these, you get compliance of 0.72. So about three quarters or more of compliance for this. So we can see that in our maturity model, we've got some areas for improvement, okay, in these three areas. So just a, an example of how you could use a COBIT-5 
evaluation maturity model in a practical way. Now, I like the factor analysis of information risk based capability maturity model because it's kind of in more layman's terms. It takes those five CMMI levels and kind of makes them more real world, kind of more realistic. So let's look at level one, which is called chaotic by the Open Fair Group. Here you have decision making that's done on an ad hoc basis, on the fly, basically almost completely on experience if you even have any. So it's instinctual based on your intuition. Here, we often see poorly defined decision-making authority. It's inconsistent. It's rarely aligned with the C-suite, okay, your executives. And there's probably a total lack of key indicators, goal indicators, risk indicators, and performance indicators. At level two, this is called the implicit level, where decision-making is being driven by strict adherence to standards and policies. However, those standards and policies may or may not align with what your governance is, with the charter that you've been given as a CISO. Maybe it doesn't meet up to the expectations or the deliverables that the C-suite wants. The most common input here at the implicit level is superficial or poorly scrutinized data. So the data that leads to information is not going to get to the point of what we call knowledge and wisdom here. The roles and responsibilities are vague. Most assessments are being done qualitatively based on subjective expert judgment, bias of subject matter experts, and maybe just a, an agenda. You may have some indicators, some key indicators, but from a practical standpoint, they're probably immaterial. And also the understanding of your practitioners of the concepts of risk, risk management are mostly unreliable and superficial at maturity level two. At level three, the early explicit level, here your terminology is becoming standardized. You have a clear path. Maybe you have an ontology like the open fair model, for example. Remember an ontology is a formal naming and definition of types, properties, and interrelationships of entities. So it's the schema. So you're standardizing your schema. Decision-making is being supported by more complete and reliable data and information. So here we're starting to get knowledge because we have visibility tools that are being used and updated like dashboards. We're starting to see the performance of robust and defensible analysis. The C-suite, uh, yourself, the CISO, you're performing high-level policy reviews. You're activating steering committees. They're being formed, and they're actually productive. You've got a risk register compiled. Uh, you're setting up severity scales for qualitative and quantitative analysis. And KGIs, KRIs, and KPIs are well-established. At level four, we call this mature explicit. The quality of your visibility of your risk management program is now becoming well evident. The data and information is becoming knowledge, real knowledge, where you're aggregating and you're correlating the views of enterprise risk handling, and it's being decided upon in a quantitative manner or a semi-quantitative manner. You're starting to see the pros and cons more clearly. You're probably iteratively going back to other phases in the life cycle for continual improvement. As a CISO, you and the other executives are strategically prioritizing and choosing the right controls based on a variety of well-established metrics and indicators. You might see the introduction of data science tools here, machine learning, big data analysis, and other heuristic methodologies. At level five, we call this purely explicit. All the decisions here are completely based on the risk appetite using proven, quantifiable, and visible metrics and analysis, all being automated and delivered with solid visibility tools. There's a near complete wisdom into the terminology, the risk concepts, residual and inherent risk, visibility, analysis, and the authority of decision-making. So hopefully this fair-based maturity model, when you compare it to the previous model, with these five levels, hopefully it helps you understand kind of where the CMMI is coming from with these five levels in kind of a more realistic and real world fashion.
Another key concept here is lessons learned. Lessons learned is part of an organization's assets. It's not a physical asset, but it's a logical, intangible asset. And it goes along with your knowledge base and your historical information. It should be delivered between processes and life cycle iterations, not just at the end of the process. But you will document lessons learned at the closure or disposition of a project or a program. And we use lessons learned to implement approved process improvement activities. Something else you might also use is an after action report. And this is commonly used by FEMA, Department of Homeland Security and the military. This is a template that you can actually use in your own environment. The after action report and the lessons learned report often work hand in hand. In other words, you may deliver your lessons learned report based on the after action report or improvement plan. You see the name of your exercise and the dates, the publication date. If we go down, we can see uh, instructions, okay, points of contact, the director of this particular initiative or project or program. This is a template, by the way. So you've got an overview of your exercise, the design summary capabilities. And so this is just one example, but there's really three main goals to an after action report. One is to identify the difficult challenges in areas for improvement. That's what this report will be an output for. Also, you can use this to suggest actions that'll mitigate problematic components in your technical controls. So for example, if we're doing this template for a BYOD initiative, you know, bring your own device initiative, or we're going through a new physical security initiative for the campus, starting at, you know, the street, working your way back to the buildings. Uh, it also helps you obtain your lessons learned documentation. So the structure of this can vary, but it'll typically have an overview, some stated objectives, analysis of your results, analysis of critical task performance, and a summary, and then finally, of course, some recommendations. Okay, here in lesson 4.1, where we're analyzing risk metric scenarios to secure our enterprise, it was all about reviewing the effectiveness of our existing security controls using a variety of tools. 